out here in Clay, New York, just kind of north of Liverpool, a little bit uh, south of the Fulton Speedway with the guy that, well, if you were on the outlaw circuit and uh, Fulton and Brewer and Speedways back in the 80s, uh, up until 1993, Mark Weaven Weaver, they called him. That was his nickname back then. Got 10 seasons of racing in, in that time, started in street stocks, went to limited late models, picked up his only feature wins in late model competition. He showed me some pictures. For those of you guys who weren't around back then, if you remember the old super stocks at BlackRock had very similar to that, very cool looking cars, by the way, did outlaw mods and open sportsmen as well. Uh, and we're going to catch up with him today and see how things are going. How have you been, man? I, I see you every now and then over at Drivers Village. How are things? It's going well. I, you know, it, everything's going great, Doug. How about you? Good. I'm, I'm having lots of fun. So Good. we're going to show you the couple things he's got here in the garage that are very <laughs> cool too. You've seen is probably as, as Burt Reynolds Trans Am a few times, but you may not have seen the other car that I'm going to I'm going to maybe buy by the time I leave. We'll have to see how much he wants to sell it to me for. So what got you into racing back in 1980? Let me see. You would have been what 22 maybe somewhere around there, 23? Somewhere around there. Uh, got married early, had a few kids, so I had to wait. Um, I just my my uncle used to race a car, uh, and he had Art Reynolds and a bunch of different people back in the flathead day, eight days. And then uh, Dave Weaver used to run street stocks at uh, Brewerton. So watched relative him a little years. bit, relative cousin. Okay. And uh, I just, you know, I, I really was a huge Tim Richmond fan. Uh, I really enjoyed what, or back then there was only a few races, CBS and such, but uh, I like watching him and, and what he brought to the sport. And I asked Jack Gross, who was uh, Donnie Watmore's crew chief back in the day. And uh, Donnie, or Jack and I were best friends in school. And uh, asked if he put a cage in my 71 Roadrunner that I bought, and he agreed to do that. So that's how we got our start. So 71 Roadrunner street stock? 71 street stock, yeah. We paid $50 for the car. We got it all out, and Jack put a cage in it and uh, went to Brewerton and Fulton and ran it for, uh, for a season. Were there a lot of guys running Mopars back then? There was. Uh, uh, Richie Rivet and Dick Murtaugh and... There was a few other ones. I can't remember all the names back then, but yeah, there was a lot of Mopars back then. So what, how'd you do? Do you remember the first night in the Roadrunner? Uh, I don't, uh, I was playing down in the mud. I didn't really know where the groove was. Okay. I didn't really, as much as I uh, watched racing, I, I guess I didn't really understand. And I had a few people whisper in my ear that you got to get up in a groove and, you know, and uh, people passed me like I was standing still. And <laughs> finally started to catch on later on and started running better. I think I won a few heats with it. I never won any features think we probably maybe a few tenths uh nine or tenth fit place finishes in that car uh by that season it was pretty much all done and in the following year i bought a 72 challenger and we built that one had a little better engine built for it and started running better with that one and uh, those cars back then uh it was a little different uh, a lot of crash banging it seemed like and okay. uh uh a car would last about a season. That was it. Oh, really? I mean, nothing left. Of course, they nah. didn't have frames. They were unibody, right? Yeah, so. pretty much unibody, unless you did some framework underneath. Which did people do that? Yeah, uh, some people did, but you know, okay. you, you basically tied it together with a cage. And then in '83, oh. uh, uh, Mark Zona had quit racing, and he sold a car to Dave Tackman, and he went out and raced it a few times, just trying to get his feet wet. He didn't really enjoy it. I ended up buying his car, and we ran that for a season in '83. Did a whole lot better because Mark won a lot of features in that car. Uh, we did a lot better. I almost got a win one night and uh, made a mistake and half pulled into the pits and I had to go back to the back of the field. I was leading for a lot of laps and we should have won that one, but could have, would have, should have. So. Okay. <clears throat> How many years were you with the street stocks then? So three years with the streets, uh, two years with the street stock. The uh, Zonas car was considered a late, limited late model at that time. We ran a four barrel okay. headers, a uh, little bit different tire uh, compounds. They look like they were McMod tires on that one. That you yeah. Showed me. Uh, 84 is 84. one we went to the late model. Then, mm -hmm. uh, we bought that, uh, out in Bridgewater, Jerry Bish. I started racing for Jerry. Uh, I couldn't afford to make the move to late model. He bought the car out in Bridgewater. Uh, I forgot what the name, the guy's name that owned it, but it was a number 70 car, picked it up on a Monday night, brought it back to Jack Rose's garage. Uh, had a quick change in it. We couldn't run quick change at the time. We, we, we had a Ford floater that we had bought out of a NASCAR street stock. We took that out. We was retrofitting everything. Bob Rogers was building an engine for us. Deke Dector sold us some tires and four nights in, in the garage, three nights actually, and an all day Friday. And uh, people were working on a car as we're heading to the speedway at Burton. They were literally on the back of the trailer our rollback actually when Jerry was driving really yeah, we pulled, the pulled into the pits <laughs> and Bob Rogers wouldn't let us run the engine unless we had enough uh, 
uh, cycles on it, you know, get it broke in. I see. And we're having issues with the carburetor. So Bob says, well, let me run back to Deke's shop and I'll grab another carburetor. So we kept it running as best we could. He flies into pits, throws a couple tires in the truck as he pulls into pits. And he goes, oh, these are for Deke. He's got to go out in the future. So they let him into pits. He pulls up in front of us. We swap carburetors. We started last. Uh, had an overheating problem because we tried a, a different ty type of fan assembly on it. And uh, ended up switching the fan over. Started last and ended up challenging Besner for the for the win oh, and we ended up finishing okay. second you know four nights out with a brand new car it was pretty cool so when did we win did it come right after that uh we didn't win in 83 84 we came out really strong with the car uh we had another power plant we built a 377 you could do that back then we had two motors 355 and a 377 and we ended up getting three wins so marsden was marsden was the guy to beat back Which then marsden? uh russ russ yeah okay. russ and i ran with a lot of those guys uh Alan Waldron and all those, you know, the Q2 and a mm -hmm. bunch of those guys. So when did you switch to mod? Uh, modified. So uh, we had, I ended up parting ways with Jerry in 80, at, at the end of 84, 85, we sat out 86. And in 87, uh, I had bought a, a modified from Harry Murphy. He bought one and uh, I bought that from him. Sat in my front yard, realized that I was probably over my head, and Jerry had heard about that I bought a car, and he thought that, you know, I should be driving something that he had. So Jerry, we went down to, to the race auction back then with Corky Stockham, and uh, Walt Coberta had a car that he ran out in the east, and we ended up buying a car from Walt, and uh, it was a really nice car. It was an 86 Champ car, and we came out really strong. We finished... Uh, I think it was six in point, six in points, and we got rookie of the year uh, at both tracks in nice. uh, '88, and then in '89, well '86 or '88, we took it out to rolling wheels for the last race, and uh, we didn't get in the show. And Marcel France come across the line, and he blew his engine, and Marcel was looking for a ride, and Jerry goes, he goes, what do you think? Let Marcel run the car? And I said, it's yours. We can. I said, I'd, I, you know, I'm a huge Marcel LaFrance fan. Yeah, the hammer. So he, he put his uh, tires and stuff on it, and he went out, started last. He started coming up through the field, and they went into turn three, and we seen a cloud of dust from the uh -oh. from the pits, and the uh, car didn't come out of it. got rear-ended hard. He didn't – the front end was unscathed, but the rear end it totaled the car. Okay. So the Troyer Mud Bus came out in 89. Jerry went up and bought a brand-new chassis. Uh, from Billy Colton, brought that back, freshened up some parts, put it on a car, and then we had a dynamite season. That was uh, that was a really good year for us. Uh, come out strong. Uh, did flip it one night. It was a brand new car. It was sad. Uh, Tommy Jewell Jr. got down in the mud and slid up, and we caught tires and uh, rolled it once, and uh, did a lot of frame damage on it. But uh, had a really good run in that car. It was leading one night to. Uh, Everybody. I mean, Joey Sabaka, Donnie Wetmore, Roger Phelps, they're all contenders on, on restarts. And I had the night covered and uh, a little mishap by uh, the driver putting, cleaning the air filter, putting a nut on top of the, on top of the air cleaner and the air cleaner ended up uh, loosening up. The nut went down the carburetor oh, no. and, and uh, the piston was, was actually that. sitting over there on the shelf with the nut stuffed into it. And we lost a motor leading. It was pretty sad, but that before definitely I, would have been a good win for us. Finished his career in open sports. We're running out of time real fast here. So before I go, I wanted to show you a couple of things he's got in the garage here. First of all is the Burt Reynolds car, the Trans Am. 78 Trans Am. That's over here. All right. And the other one, this is the one I'm going to buy here before I leave tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try anyway. What year uh, vet is this? It's a 2005 C6. What are you asking for this? Uh, $30,000. It's uh, got... Let me uh, check my wallet. I think <laughs> I'm a little short. So I'll have to maybe come <laughs> back for that. But if you're interested, give Mark, give him a call. You know, and uh, you know, hey, great spending time with you. I'm sorry I had to cut this short, but we, we went a little longer in the middle part there. But uh, again, uh, look him up if you're interested in that. He's going to take me for a ride in the Trans Am <laughs> next year, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Hit the bluey guys, subscribe. Every time we're talking to somebody cool, the nine close to ten minutes just flies by. Thanks for having me, Art Mark. I wish you all the best, man. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it.